Good morning or good afternoon to everyone. You should see my outline on the screen here of the, the topics we're going to cover here today with giving you an introduction on how to use PlanSwift with Electrical Bid Manager. Now, the first thing to make clear is that Electrical Bid Manager or PlanSwift is a separate, uh, is a, a third-party program. It's from a separate company. So it, we have developed integration with the program. Matter of fact, we've been doing it for almost two years now since we've released the first version of Electrical Bid Manager that integrates with PlanSwift. But it is a third-party program. You can purchase it through us. Um, and then there's the issue of linking it to EBM. Now, the first thing to check on your system is what version number you have. If you go up to Help and About, You'll see at the top here it says V11.2, and then this is the build date of this particular release. This is the version that was released uh, just recently for the support, uh, for people on support. Or if you've purchased the program recently, you should have a, a V11.2 build and a date of March or later on the build date. That's got the most recent integration with the PlanSwift program. Now, again, if you've got versions that go back to the middle of 2016, they still integrate but they don't have all the latest features incorporated, so uh, you need to check that out. Now, as far as integrating with EBM, right now I'm running the Pro version. The Pro version automatically includes the integration, the link between PlanSwift and, you know, and uh, EBM. If you're on the Plus or the standard version, you'll have to put an unlock code in, and that's also under Help, under, en under, 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 under Enter Unlock Codes. So you'll need to be at your computer if you haven't unlocked the integration. You call in. If you've paid for the integration on the plus or the standard, <clears throat> they will ask you to read this machine ID here, and they'll give you a feature unlock code to unlock the integration. But again, you've got to be at your computer because that number is generated at, uh, specifically for that computer at that point in time. Again, if you're on Pro, you don't need to do that. It's automatically integrated. And then under Settings and Program Settings, you need to go up to importing, and you need to check this little box to install PlanSwift. Now, if it's the first time you've done it, it'll automatically prompt you to install the plugins. I'll show you the plugins in a little bit. The plugins are some special buttons, features that we put onto the PlanSwift screen <clears throat> just to use with Electrical Bid Manager. And then finally, if it's the first time you do it, you want to close EBM and reopen it. That way, the integration will be activated. I think that's it as far as integrating the programs. Let me just take a quick look back at my outline there. Yeah, you want to have the plugins. You need the unlock codes if you don't have Pro, and then you need the program settings to 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 tell it to integrate with PlanSwift. Okay, now <clears throat> from that point on, it's just a matter of linking a job in EBM to the job in PlanSwift. Now, I'm doing this on one screen today. That's the only way I know to do it on the internet, unless everybody else had two screens, and I had two screens. So it's a little bit of a limited uh, presentation of what we're doing with this, because you really should have it on two screens. And then they don't need to be 60-inch screens. You can work really, very well with 32-inch screens, a uh, couple of dual screens. But I, I'm going to be toggling back and forth between the programs, where if you had two screens, you just move your mouse back and forth, and it's a lot easier to to, to run the two programs at the same time. So I've got EBM open. I don't have a job open. Now, I've already opened up PlanSwift. You'll see it down in my taskbar here. And again, I don't have a job open. One of the things I would recommend you do in PlanSwift is to hit the little arrows up here because you don't need that template on the right part of the screen. That gives you a little more area. This is where your drawings are going to go. So to link a job from EBM to PlanSwift, you just simply create a new job. You give it a name. It's not case sensitive, but it just looks better. Now, it needs to link the job name and the job number. Now, the number it'll link automatically, but I'm going to copy that name into the clipboard so I don't have to type it in when I actually activate the job in PlanSwift. You come down here and hit OK. And you can go to any part of the takeoff. It doesn't matter at this point. I'm going to start by taking off some switches. So I'm going to go to Device Assemblies. I'm going to go to Switches. One gang, one single pole, and then I select 20 amp spec grade in a plastic plate. Now, if this is the first time you've activated, activated the, the integration with PlanSwift, you'll see these two little icons all throughout EBM now. This little one is to count, that's to refresh, 
if you're in a field where it wants a length, it'll be the same button, but it'll be a length to get a, a length or a measurement. But when I click that, it's going to go look for PlanSwift. And it's going to now tell me or allow me to create a new job. That's the number that's automatically put from EBM, and then I'm going to just paste the job name in. So the next step is to in the drawings. So at this point, you would have needed to have downloaded them somewhere on your system. Now, they may be individual files, or in this case, this is probably the way you normally get them. You'll get one file that needs to be extracted, uh, one PDF file, but it does support other formats. But it typically is going to be a PDF file that needs to be extracted. So you check that file. Again, you have to locate it wherever you've stored it on your system. Hit Next. Now, this resolution here, I've played around with this a little bit, but somewhere between 250 and 300, the higher the number, the more resolution you get, the longer it takes to create the job. And so you see automatically it's going to convert PDF files to TIFF files. So I'll hit Finish, and then it'll go create the job. So there's my job. I'm going to go back into PlanSwift for a second. Now, before I even start the takeoff, there's some little housekeeping I want to do here. First thing you want to do is set the scale. You do that by coming up to the top here. There's a drop down. Now, this drawing is supposed to be an eighth of an inch equals a foot. And what it's telling us here is we need to check the dimensions, both vertical and horizontal. So these eight-foot fixtures here are a good one to check. If I go to dimension, I can click here, click on the other end of the fixture. So obviously the scale is off where I've got a very odd fixture. It's not an 11-foot fixture. So to fix the scale, you come up here to the button right above the drop-down menu, and you put in the distance that that's supposed to be, which is 8 feet. And then you hit OK. You click here, click there, and that'll set it to 8 feet. Now that's setting the horizontal, I also need to check the vertical. So there's some 2 by 4 fixtures here. A lot of drawings will have a dimension on them, but we're just going to use these 4-foot fixtures here. So again, we come up to the button above the scale. We make that 4-foot, hit OK, click here, and click here. So now I've got a vertical and a horizontal measurement set. Now, if I'm going to establish names for these, you want to do it before you start the takeoff. So I'm going to go to right-click and hit Properties. I'm going to type in E201 Lighting and hit OK. OK, so now I'm ready. Go back into EBM. I'm clicking down here at the bottom. I'm going to select that switch. I'm going to hit the Plan Swift button to count. Now, when it brings you back to PlanSwift, you'll notice these little corners have blue triangles. That means it's activated. It's ready to count. So a couple of navigation tools. The easiest one is the wheel and the mouse. It zooms in and zooms out. Very simple, very easy. I can also take my right mouse button, hold it down, and pan or drag just by dragging it around the drawing. There's some scroll bars at the bottom. You can go right and left with those. But I think the easiest thing is just to hold your right mouse button down and go to wherever you want. There are some tools up here to zoom in, zoom out. You can also zoom in on a specific area. Maybe I want to zoom in on the, on the uh, electric room up here. When you hit this zoom tool, you can just draw a box around it. Then if I want to go back to the entire page, I just hit this little button here. Now you see I was in the count mode, and I accidentally counted something there. Let me get rid of that real quick. So here's how you delete something. You right-click on an item and hit Delete Point, and it's gone. Okay, we've set the scale. We're now going to go back to EBM and pick this assembly one more time. Going to hit the Count button, and we'll just start counting. I'm just clicking with my mouse there. Now, if you don't like the colors or the size or the shape that it uses initially, you can change that at any point. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So we just move around the drawing, counting the switches.
there's one down here. Again, this brings you back to the full page. You can kind of look in and see maybe there's one up here. Got that one. There's one I missed. No, that's an occupancy sensor. There's one I missed right there. So I hit the little red button to stop digitizing. And it takes my count right back to the screen where I started it in DVM. So what you save time on, obviously, is not having to write things down and input them. It eliminates that whole step. So if I want to do a three-way switch, go to the three-way switches, hit the count button. So once you get everything set up, it moves pretty quick. Here's a three-way switch. I'm using the pan button to move down here. Hit the little red button. There's my two of those. So for a fixture, for example, I would go to light fixtures. Back on the drawing, this 2 by 4 lay-in is a type F. So back in EVM, we're going to type in an F. We're going to go to saved assemblies, 2 by 4 LED lay-in. I'm going to add a fixture whip. And if I'm ready to count, hit the button to count. I always like to start kind of up in the top left. And I won't count them all. You get the idea. You can see right at the crosshair of the mouse, it's keeping a running count. It's also keeping that count over here on the left, right there. Now, I'm going to make a mistake here because I want to show you how to correct it. I'm going to count that as a 2 by 4. I'm going to hit the little red button to stop digitizing. Let's uh, say I didn't catch the mistake yet. I'm going to hit F2 takeoff. And I come back to my drawings. I say, whoops, that should not be a, a type F fixture. All you do is right-click on it, and you hit delete point. Now, in EBM, it, it's going to bring it to a little uh, spreadsheet in EBM under the tools. So if I come down here to tools, and hit plan swift, I'll see that minus one that I just deleted. So all you do is highlight it and hit F2 takeoff. So the way this works is anything that you initiate in plan swift, rather than picking the item out of, or the assembly out of EBM, for example, if I want to add some more two by four fixtures, I don't have to go back into EBM. I can hit on the little window over here, this little green button, I count some more two by fours. Hit the little red button to stop digitizing. But again, back in EBM, it's going to bring them into this little window under the tools to add those seven. If you initiate the takeoff in EBM again, let's do one more item. Let's do a two-gang switch. It'll bring it right back into this window here. So I click the plan swift. There's a two-gang red button, and I'm done. Okay, so that's how you count. It's pretty basically straightforward. If you know how to find the item in EBM, just uh, select it and count it. Um, let's move on to the other drawing here. I'm going to use this little minus sign to collapse that. I'm going to go to this one. So I'm going to name this first. Don't You have to rename it or give it a new name before you start the takeoff, otherwise it'll kind of get mixed, messed up. So this is E301. This is power. And we'll hit OK. So again, let's go through those steps of setting the scale. And again, we don't have any dimensions besides maybe a three-foot door. So we're going to go up to the... Now, I can set it to an eighth of an inch of a foot, but I'm not even going to bother because I can tell you any time you've got a set of drawings that's messed up, all the pages will be messed up. So I'm going to skip the step of setting the scale and checking the scale. I'm just going to go straight to setting it. So that's three feet. Click here. Click there. And we need to find a horizontal. So we're going to go to three feet there. Now before I finish this, look over here to the left. <clears throat> See, I've set the, the vertical. 
you can see it's going to add another arrow though once I once I set the horizontal. So we click here, click there. See now that little symbol has got it both ways. If I was going to count receptacles, it's the same thing. You go back to EBM, go to receptacles, duplex, 20 amp spec grade, and hit the count button. I'll just do a couple of those because now you know how to count. It's pretty straightforward. Hit the red button to stop digitizing. Hit OK. Now to measure, you see this 60 amp disconnect here on the air handler unit? It goes up to panel PP2 in the top right. So I need to measure up and over. You do that by going to EBM, just to where you normally would under branch circuits. We're going to go to saved assemblies, set screw steel stranded wire, one inch with three sixes and a ten. Now we can count elbows, and they can be field bends or factory, el uh, or factory elbows. I'll do a field bend. So now this button here next to the link is going to be to measure. So when you click it, you click where you start, click where you're going to change directions, over here. Now when you're done with the run, you double click to end that measurement. Now these little buttons up at the top are the plugins, and because of my resolution not being very high, you don't see the graphics as they would be shown on a higher resolution screen. But I want to put a drop at the end of that run of 10 feet. That's what this first button does up here. So I just type in a 10, put a drop right there. Oops. Now, back in EBM, I can also count elbows. See the little button next to the elbows field? So I'm going to put an elbow right here, right here, and right here. Red button will stop digitizing. Back into EBM. There's my total of 58.6 feet, one run. I accidentally cut an extra elbow. We'll change that back to three. And hit takeoff. I'm going to put in 10 feet of makeup. Now, if you want to do some branch circuit takeoff, just since we're in branch circuits, we'll take off some of these outlets here in the warehouse in conduit. We go to EMT or EBM and then hit saved assemblies. We'll do three quarter with three twelves. We'll hit the measurement button. So I'm going to go all the way to the corner before I change directions. Come all the way down here and double click. Now EBM wants you to count those three runs, and we can do it electronically by hitting the button up at the top. It's the third one. So when you click here, click here, and click here. See those blue buttons? Those are three runs. So over here on the left, you'll see 88 feet, three runs. When you hit the button to stop digitizing, it takes you back to EBM, fills in the length, the number of runs, and you just hit takeoff. So you can digitize the length, you can digitize the drop or the riser, you can digitize the elbows, and you can digitize the runs. That can all be done electronically. Three of those buttons are right up here, the drop riser, the elbows, and the runs. Okay. So um, I showed you how to delete things and what happens with those. Another neat feature here is the legend feature. Now I'm going to hit fit page first. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to do show legend. Now it pops it up in the bottom left, but you don't have to leave it there. Maybe I want to drag it up to the top right. And I can still resize it. These little, I can grab that little point there and make it smaller. When you print this, it's going to print exactly with what you see on the page here. You can print it on a standard printer. You can print it on a plotter to get it a full size. But that way, your electricians in the field will see your whole takeoff here on the legend. I think that's pretty helpful. They can see how you routed this home run here for the air handler unit. They can see your feeder takeoff. Anything you take off on that page would be shown on, on the legend there. And that legend is active. As you make more entries, it gets it gets updated, and you can add notes. I mean, it um, gets updated and um, 
changes the quantities. Now I find this highlighter kind of handy. You've got different colors. If I want to highlight the notes down here at the bottom of the drawing because I read them, I might want to highlight the page number if I'm done taking it off. And then you can also put notes on the drawing. Just draw a little box around where you want the note, type in some notes, and hit OK. And again, you can make that a bigger field if you want, or a bigger text. Use different background colors. So this kind of gets into the, the, the territory of doing as -built. So You might want to put some notes on your drawings after you've finished it. You can even put additional symbols on here. Let's say I added a couple receptacles in the hallway here. What we're going to do is go back into EBM to the devices, 20 amp spec grade. I'm going to put one here and here. I'm going to go ahead and take them off. And then I can go back into PlanSwift and make that into a symbol by right-clicking and go into Properties. You could also do it over on the left here. It doesn't matter which place you do the properties. Now, instead of a round symbol, you can go to one of the standard symbols from PlanSwift, which are squares and triangles. Or there's a library here for EBM symbols. Let's do a red one. We'll do a wiring device. Now nah, we'll do black. That's okay. We'll do wiring devices, duplex. That's the scaled size. I usually leave that just about where it is. And you'll see those receptacles in the hallway now. I didn't get that one quite where I want, but I can move it. Just drag it. Works pretty nice. So it's not a full-scale CAD program, obviously, but you can do some nice little uh, uh, design build or uh, if you need to do uh, as-builds, it'll work great for that. Okay. I think we've covered all the basics here. You know how to measure, you know how to count, you know how to set the scale. Very important. I don't know what percentage of the time the drawings are, are messed up in the scale, but... I can tell you if you have 10 pages and you check the first page, I can pretty much guarantee you all out of nine pages will be need will need to be adjusted. And the opposite is usually true. If you've got 10 pages and you check the first, second page, you'll be, you'll be okay from there. Uh, you know the tools at the top to zoom in or to fit the page first, and then you can zoom in, zoom out. But it's just as easy with the wheel and the mouse. I'm just wheel and mouse forward to zoom in, backward to zoom out. I think that's going to wrap it up. I'm going to go ahead and sign off here, but before I do, I just want to tell you real quickly about the other training options. In addition to these webinars, which are free, but they're you watching somebody else present the program, we have hands-on training. You can purchase additional one-on-one -on -one training over the Internet online. You can do on-site training. That's often a great option when you have more than one or two people to train, or especially if you've got different levels of users, different programs. Maybe you need some help on EBM and time material billing or EPIC or any of those things. So you've got, maybe you want to customize your database for things that you're doing that are a little bit different than the typical commercial guy. The on-site sessions are good for that. Um, classroom training, we're going to have one next month in Austin, Texas on the 26th and 27th. And at those classes, we provide the computers. So again, it's hands-on. You're running the computer, not watching somebody else. Now, finally, um, I've done several of these now at different locations. We're going to be doing an estimating fundamentals class. So if you've got somebody maybe who's working in the field, hasn't been taught how to do the basics of electrical estimating, we'll take them from square one, doing a manual takeoff, uh, using computerized estimating, and even doing electronic takeoff, all in a one six, seven, eight hour day. So it's a good class for somebody in the field who's maybe going to be helping with change orders, going to be helping do some of the takeoffs, and needs some good introduction to the fundamentals of how to do it. And of course, we use EBM on the computer side. I think that's going to wrap it up. I hope everybody has a good rest of your day and a great weekend. And let us know if there's anything we can do to help you with our programs or uh, suggestions on improvements, uh, any, anything we can do to help you. Thanks again.